<laughs> Welcome to the cult classic horror show. Every week, you can have the conversations you've always wanted to have about the films you love. Shut up! Get rid of your distractions and prepare yourself you got a big surprise coming to you. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, everybody, to the Cult Classic Horror Show here. Uh, Danny Bonin with you. And uh, it's just me. I have a special guest on the line today. Please welcome director Charlie Steeds. Hello. Thanks for having me back. Of course. And I, I say director, but really it's like writer, director, producer, <laughs> uh, editor, too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, great. Uh, some of you guys listening may remember we did have Charlie on, uh, well, this might have been a year ago now or something, uh, yeah, for maybe. Cannibal Farm, it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're here to talk about two of his new films coming out. Uh, mostly Winter Skin is uh, coming out this month, the month of May. Uh, but then you'll want to keep your eyes open for the barge people coming out uh, probably near the end of the year. So, uh, but yeah, I've, it's awesome to have you on again, Charlie. And uh, I know that you've, uh, you've been really busy since Cannibal Pharma. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. <laughs> um, I, I just, I talk about it with, with Scotty still that, that it's sort of an inspiration that, uh, you know, you saved up some money, you crashed on some couches and you made, <laughs> you made that movie and, it seems like since then you've just been been busy doing what you love to do, almost solid. I mean, has there been a have you had a break at all? Uh, well, basically, after Cannibal Farm, I made another film, The House of Violent Desire, and then uh, that's when I then did The Barge People and Winter Skin, and they were both a major shift into doing films with bigger budgets. Uh, I mean, they're still they're still very low budget films, mm-hmm. but. I mean, a, a huge difference compared to Escape from Cannibal Farm. Um, and so, you know, the production was bigger and uh, every, everything was bigger and sort of more exciting. And, you know, I, I just, I, I do make a lot of stuff, but I don't try and rush anything. I, I'm, not, I'm not here, like, trying to get a certain amount of movies out per year. I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll dedicate all my time to one when I'm happy with it and it's finished, that's that one done. And then, you know, you move on to the next one, dedicate your time to that one. Sure. Um, and so that's basically uh, how it's been. And, I mean, the barge people, I actually shot before Winter Skin. Okay. Um, and that has taken a really long time to eventually get to the point where, uh, you know, we're happy with it and we went back and shot s- some more scenes just to flesh it out. And um, I'm not sure I'm allowed to, I'm not sure I'm supposed to say yet, like, uh, where it's going and who's got it and all this sort of stuff. Sure. Because I think there'll be like an official announcement. But uh, of my films, that one seems to have got, I mean, it seems to have got the most attention, you know. Sure. Uh, the reaction to the trailer and uh, the amount of sort of high up industry people that started getting in touch with me for that trailer, there was just something about that project. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I shot that in 2017, yeah. uh, and now it's coming out. If we're lucky, it'll be out by the end of 2019. So wow. that one's actually taken quite a while. Wow. Um, Winter Skin is a film that uh, I've shot basically. Uh, I shot Barge People, and then I was scheduled to shoot Winter Skin, and Barge People had happened a little bit late. Um, we'd got started on the shoot later than I wanted. And so I shot Barge People, edited it for maybe a month, and then I shot and edited the entire of Winter Skin for six months. Wow. And then I returned back to the Barge People to finish <laughs> off the Barge People, which is part of why it took so long. Wow. Um, 
but Winter Skin was a project that it was funded before I shot The House of Violent Desire. Mm. Um, and it just kind of, I, I was just desperate to get these dates in to actually shoot Winter Skin. But because it's set in the snow, it needed to be shot at winter, you know. And, yeah. and, we, and we'd actually, I was hoping to get the winter of the, the, uh, winter of the first half of 2017 but we probably delayed almost a year until we actually shot it because we missed that winter uh, you know we missed the snow yeah um but finally got around to it <laughs> and where uh well uh, before i talk about location and such i just because i think we we barely touched on this uh when we talked to you last uh it, it was funded already by like a distributor right wasn't it that's right yeah yeah okay that 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 had uh taken was it one that had taken cannibal farm as well or that's right yeah okay. so basically the sales agency who took cannibal farm they then started to distribute their own films and they also then started to uh fund their own films ah. um and so basically i knew and they knew that they wanted to do something with me and we'd spoken back and forward about what project i would do and you know they'd asked me to do some stuff that involved like cgi and things and eventually well, i mean we couldn't agree on anything so eventually <laughs> they were just like why don't you just send us your ideas of, of what you have <laughs> so i sent them a list of ideas maybe five ideas and the reason they liked winter skin is because i said that it had a little bit of uh, Stephen King misery vibe to it. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, which which it does, and that is why they funded it. You know, and wow. they said if you can steer this, I mean, they, but they basically said if you can steer this close to misery, so that we can market it as like misery, Stephen King, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Then you know that's basically where that's what they saw in the project. Wow. So that was kind of interesting because. When I was writing the project, yeah, Misery was an influence, but not a major influence. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the general setup, you know, I, I was worried that, you know, it's too close to Misery. So I was doing everything I could to pull it back from Misery. <laughs> um, and then when they said that's what they liked about the project, it's kind of like then I was able to make it basically you want to put enough in there so that the trailer can look as close to misery as possible. Sure, sure. You know, it, it kind of, I mean, I'm all about original horror content. You know, I've got no interest in ripping off other stuff, which, you know, a lot of people do. Sure. But at the same time, if you do want your film to get out there and to sell well, people, they really do only buy the things that they already know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people might complain, oh, this looks like misery. What a rip off. But they'll buy it because yeah. they like misery. Uh, whereas if it looked nothing like misery um, or nothing like anything they'd ever seen, you know, may maybe they wouldn't even bother picking it up. Yes. So Yes. it's a it's a sort of fine balance of uh getting that right you know no that's true and and if it makes you feel any better i actually i, I watched this uh, uh -huh. two nights ago and um i i actually like i didn't now now that you mentioned misery i totally put it together and it, and there are definite elements of misery in it but while watching it i actually wasn't really thinking about misery the whole time so i do think there's <laughs> definitely enough good, originality good. yeah yeah Good, because I mean, like I said, the only thing that's the only misery element from it is yes, there's snow, there's there's a house in the snow, and there's there's a guy who is injured and a, a crazy woman who's looking after him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, like, that is the identical <laughs> setup of misery. But I should hope that there's enough things in Winter Skin that I mean, story-wise, that are totally different and come from a totally different place that makes it interesting and unique in its own, you know? Sure, sure. Now, uh, now because the listeners haven't seen this yet, um, mm -hmm. I, I do want to just uh, go over a, a quick synopsis uh, before we just talk about the film so you, you at least get an yeah. idea of what it's about. And then, of course, you guys should watch it um, once it comes out. Um, so uh, unless you have a, a special, do you, do you want to just sort of give us your take on it? Your just your quick synopsis of what the film is about. Yeah, sure. Um, it's basically about a guy and his dad. They're out in the snowy wilderness. Uh, they're, they're hunting animals and the guy, the, the younger guy basically strays from the path and finds this little cabin and he's shot by the person inside the cabin 
wakes up later on inside the cabin and he's trapped in there with this old lady who tells him that there are bloodthirsty, skinless creatures outside the cabin that have been terrorizing her. And for that reason, he and her are going to remain stuck in the cabin, but not all is what it seems. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Definitely uh, an interesting synopsis. So, um, well, yeah, well, let's talk about it a bit because uh, mm-hmm. the first thing would be, yeah, the location. So first of all, where, where did you shoot the film? So basically we, sh- we shot it in two places. All the exteriors were shot in Lapland in Finland, okay. uh, which was amazing, you know, getting to go out to the snow. I'd never been to, I'd never been to that part of the world. Um, you know, on the, on the night we all arrived there, uh, the northern lights were in the sky, mm. you know, uh, at midnight I came out of the actual cabin in the film is where <laughs> I stayed during the the exterior shots mm. so we basically shot all the exteriors of the cabin and the snowy woods out in lapland okay um and you know at midnight when i came out of the cabin the northern lights you know they were right above my head wow. uh which was amazing so that was really fun and then the interiors were all shot back in england um on a set that we built totally from scratch wow. um so the the actual cabin in the film it, it is not a cabin uh basically it, this was amazing because i'd written the script and i had a really specific idea of this cabin because i mean the, almost the whole film is set in the cabin mm-hmm. so i had a very specific idea of where i need the staircase to be where i need the upper floor and the bedroom to be and so i basically drew this plan and that's what was built wow um and so it was great you know having i mean this set was the size of a house uh, (laughs) and just built from scratch every bit of furniture i hand-picked and put in there um so it basically looked exactly as uh, i'd imagined it that's that's great and did um for the for the exteriors where you were was that something that you had sent someone to scout out or how did you find the perfect place for that uh, no, I just found that basically on the internet, you know, <laughs> that's the, that's the joy of, of modern, course. modern times. I just went on the internet, found literally the perfect cabin that I had in mind. Uh, then obviously when we built the set, we had to, we had to know which cabin we were going to use because mm-hmm. we shot the exteriors after we'd shot the interiors, but we needed to make sure the windows were in the right place and the door was in the right place. So yeah, I'd found this perfect cabin and that's the cabin that, you know, I, I contacted the owner, and that's where we ended up filming. Wow, wow. And, and how, how long were you actually uh, up in Finland for on location? Uh, not very long, actually. I think we were there for maybe five days. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that was enough to get a good amount of stuff in the snow. Um, and it was, it, it was, I was worried that it was going to, you know, I didn't know how it was going to be. I didn't know how cold it was going to be. I didn't know if there'd be people all around. Um, so that was kind of worrying, but it was actually, we had just the whole place to ourselves. You know, you just walked into the forest and there was just endless, beautiful, snowy scenery wow. and just nobody around. And the other good thing actually was there was no wind whatsoever. So the sound was like, pristine huh. you know in the snow yeah um so all of these things that i was worried about how are we going to do this in the snow and that in the snow uh actually it worked really well and so i'm hoping that i'll do another snow-based film in the future now that i am comfortable with actually going out there yeah was it um i mean was the cold an issue was it was it a pain in the butt to get all those all those shots and everything uh well on the uh in the interior of the cabin on the set, which we were in for, I think, about 25 days, yeah. that we shot that in January in, um, in England, and it was absolutely freezing. Oh. I've never been so cold. And, you know, in the film, you, you can see the character's breath yeah. in the air, so you can tell that it's freezing cold. And, I mean, it, it, it looks really nice because, uh, you know, you'd, you'd have the characters, you know, pour in the kettle and, uh, you know, eating hot soup and everything steaming, you yeah. know, <laughs> which looks cool. But it was, it was honestly so cold, and everything was night shoots, and it kind of was, it kind of made for a bit of a miserable experience to be honest especially when the blood came out you know oh yes there's so much blood splattering over everyone i mean people i mean everyone was just freezing you know <laughs> absolutely freezing uh whereas in finland you know we all had we we all were ready for the cold we had the right gear 
uh, it kind of wasn't that cold, you know. Oh, we, wow. we were just, you know, it was very comfortable uh, temperature. Um, I mean, I was, we were all messing around and just rolling in the snow and, uh, <laughs> you know, just being stupid between takes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, actually, it wasn't that cold. But what the, the only thing that was a little difficult was, you know, in, in the film, uh, the characters, they're walking along this pathway through the woods. Well, this pathway, which is maybe a foot wide, um, that, that snow is hard, so you can walk on that snow. If you've stepped to the left or the right, the snow is really soft, and you will just go down oh. like two meters. You know, <laughs> oh, wow. it, it will just come up to your neck. So there were, there were occasions where, you know, where we're operating uh, the camera, it's on, a, it's on a rig so that we can move along with it. And my camera operator would, you know, step a little bit out of place and he would just disappear into the snow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then we actually added that into the film. When Billy um, tries to get out of the cabin, you know, in, in the early part of the film, yeah, yeah. he's sort of wading through it chest deep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of added that in there because it was just so cool visually that you could be that deep in the snow. <laughs> oh yeah, so, no, I I instantly was thinking of location. I'm like, where did they shoot this? Because if you even look at the at the roof of the cabin, you can see about four feet of snow on top of the roof. Yeah, I mean, this is why I chose Lapland because you know it's kind of like this picture postcard idea of christmas and winter uh and really thick snow snow on all the trees and i wanted it to just look as wintry as possible basically yeah. <laughs> well so, no yeah. I, I think you definitely accomplished that it's uh <laughs> it, it looks beautiful so yeah lucked out with mm. that the um the set did, did you guys i mean did you have an actual sound stage to build the set on or did you just have like a, a non-heated warehouse or a barn or something no no it was actually built outdoors so i mean it, it was almost the same as just like you know just building a house outdoors you know mm-hmm. um and that's basically how we did it so i mean <laughs> that contributed to how freezing it was because you know the wood the wood it had kind of gaps in it as well because it's just a rickety old cabin um it was also the whole set is raised um above the the ground level so that we could actually go underneath because there's a trap door in the ground okay Um, yeah yeah that's right we we wanted to be able to have characters go underneath so that meant the entire set had to be built on stilts you know raised above the ground um so so yeah ah jeez and then was there an actual roof on, on the set you built? I mean, did you, I, I didn't remember. Is there a ceiling in there? Yeah, there is. There is. Okay. There, there was an actual roof. Yeah, I'm not sure we, we get too many shots of it, actually. Um, I did get, like, I mean, when we shot it, there were some shots of the bedroom that I got that I actually never used mm. because they looked to me too sort of, you know, too staged, too set-like. I mm. mean, there was a time where we got this scaffolding put in there and we got shots at the sort of second floor level where we could see more of the roof and, and the sort of balcony level. Sure. Um, but I didn't use them because it kind of looked like a stage then. Huh. Um, and I wanted it to look like this cozy home, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that, um, so was that where you built the set? Was that out in the country, like middle of nowhere? Is that why it was so cold too? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it was just, uh, it was just like on the outskirts of London basically. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was just, it was so cold. It was so cold. Wow. And uh, I mean, that's quite a big project. Did it take, did it take a while to actually build that whole cabin, that, that interior? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the cabin itself, I mean, my cinematographer is, is really great at construction and he helps out uh, and takes charge completely, basically, of the set building. Um, and so he and uh, his friends and other people, they all kind of chipped in. And I mean, they were working on it for at least a month, I think. Okay. Um, and then I was then just able to show up and decorate it with the furniture and stuff. Ah. Um, the only annoying thing I had to do was I had to paint the whole thing a different color. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that just took ages, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> painting every inch of the wall in a completely different color. But... 
yeah, yeah. Paint, painting is the worst <laughs> i actually i hate painting <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh, wow no i mean that's cool to be able to to do that and work with it so what because you were able to build the whole set did you um I, I didn't really wasn't thinking about it while watching. Were you able to, you know, make some fake walls or whatever, and, and so you could work around with the camera, or did you pretty much just build it like an actual cabin and, and and work with what you had as far as you know moving around with doing camera work? Yeah, we didn't do too much in the way of like removing walls or anything like that. Um, that kind of wasn't the main intention. The yeah. the real thing was that there was going to be so much blood that if it was a real cabin, uh, we would have just destroyed it, yeah. you know? And in fact, um, cause you know, in the film, uh, you know, there, there's a fair few gunshots and they're very big and splattery. Um, but every time I do one of those gunshots, we try it, we, you know, maybe 10 times each. Mm. So if you imagine all of those gunshots, but times 10, uh, yeah. you know, 10, 10 <laughs> attempts of getting it right. That's like, you know, the equivalent of like a hundred buckets of blood, you know, just being (laughs) spilled across the floor. And uh, by the time we were shooting the big climactic shootout at the end of the film, Mm -hmm. um, the floor of the cabin that we'd built was completely warped and sort of bending in areas and swollen. The wood was all misshapen. So, I mean, we would have really destroyed a place, just completely destroyed a place uh, oh. if we'd have filmed in an actual location. Wow. And so for for let's talk a little bit about some of those special effects. I mean, did you... Uh, obviously, there's a lot of blood, a lot of splattering blood with gunshots <laughs> and uh, even axe swings and things like that. Was that... Yeah. Um, I mean, you had a a team for that? Yeah, well, so in fact, on this film, on Winter Skin, it was the first time I was working with uh, a professional makeup artist because usually, um, I like, you know, on Cannibal Farm, I think I said last time I was on, I did all of those special effects yes. myself, you know, for better or worse. <laughs> it was all like, you know, my creation. Whereas, I mean, in Winter Skin, one of the, you know, one of the central plot points is to actually see this skinned skinned alive creature Mm -hmm. you know uh and so i I knew i couldn't do that myself so um we i basically hired a makeup artist uh from uh england called uh kate griffiths and she basically is i mean her work is phenomenal like when it comes to when it comes to like uh independent filmmaking and you're looking for a real genius of uh you know with not a ton of money Mm -hmm. making stuff look fantastic and also just like on the spot being able to you know you can just say to her i I need this guy to have you know a shotgun blast to his head Mm -hmm. and just on the spot she'll be able to whip that up for you uh and it would look you know brilliantly realistic stick and so she took control of uh, the creature and the other sort of really major uh, bits of gore you know yeah. um but the creature i mean th- this this poor actor playing the creature he was in my previous film the house of violent desire and i'd said do you want to play this creature because he's tall and he's skinny um and uh, he just had this he had the physicality for sure. uh, the creature um but he basically was uh, naked apart from like really, really tight spandex <laughs> shorts um, and was then on t- directly onto his skin. There was applied uh, latex and all of the sort of uh, detail of muscle tissue and a bold cap. Uh, and all of this stuff, and then just caked head to toe in very sticky blood. <laughs> and so, you know, there we were at 4 a.m., and he's being thrown around on the floor and having bucket of blood chucked in his face. Uh, I mean, he was so cold, you know. I mean, everyone was cold, but I, it must have been torture for him, wow. you know. Wow. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine uh, that's what all the sacrifices you go through, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, he's completely unrecognizable in the film. So, yeah, you know, it really is. It really is a sacrifice <laughs> because you don't get the the credit necessarily. <laughs> that's so true. Uh, well, speaking of the actors, I mean, um, I've obviously I watched this and I watched uh, Barge People last night, and yeah, um, and from Cannibal Farm, I mean, you use a lot of the same people. Are these um, 
are, are they obviously it's because they've they've done a great job before you in the past but also are they just uh, have become friends of yours i'm assuming yeah i mean um basically the actors i work with i i love this idea of uh you know if if you work with an actor and you really get on well and they uh, bring in a good performance uh in low budget independent filmmaking that's a big deal and a rare thing to find mm -hmm. so uh you know to tick all these boxes of you enjoy their company on a 25 day shoot and you love their performance and you know all these types of things then for sure you're going to want to work with them again and i like this idea of bringing back this same team uh, again and again mm -hmm. um, and I really love the idea of writing characters for these actors that are vastly different from what they played before mm -hmm. um, so you know uh, you know like with uh, David Lennick who plays the lead in the film mm -hmm. uh, he'd been in Escape from Cannibal Farm as, as the brother and this is a radically different part for him. You know, he had to grow out a bit of stubble. And obviously, I mean, one of the main things, of course, is that all these British actors are playing Americans. Um, so this was like a, a radically different type of role for him that, you know, that's exciting for the director and the actor. It's exciting to be able to deal with that. And the same with, you know, Rowena Bentley, uh, who plays Agnes. Um, basically, she'd been in Cannibal Farm. She, she'd played this, uh, the mother who was a victim the whole film, locked in a cage. And she really, she asked me to play, um, you know, a villain, a, a really horrible character. Sure. And sure. so I wrote her that. Uh, in the House of Violent Desire, and she played someone really horrible, but kind of uptight and posh and horrible. And this one was like, you know, very rural and sort of psychotic, you know, very, again, a very different type of character. Um, so yeah, that, that was just fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, um, it's, it's, it's cool to, as if you were just to see some of the same people and some of the characters they take on. Um, yeah. 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 Obviously, uh, David is probably. Uh, well, the most recognizable because he was a lead in this one, and then he had a good part in Cannibal Farm, and then uh, we see him briefly in The Barge People. So yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's fun too. Uh, Kate gets more of the the spotlight in that one, but yeah, yeah. I mean, like of course, Kate in uh, Winter Skin, she just has her her moment uh, at the beginning of the film mm -hmm. and is uh, very quickly, uh, you know, out of the movie. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, th th that's what I really enjoy doing, bringing back the same people. Um, obviously, it's always nice to bring on newcomers as well. Uh, you know, the film I shot after Winter Skin, which is currently in post-production, you know, I have a, a lot of newcomers. And in fact, in The Barge People, there's a lot of newcomers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it it's always great working with... Um, a mixture of old and new. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so on Winter Skin, uh, let's see, we got, we covered location, uh, interior and exterior. Uh, some of the great performances here. Were you, I, I guess the, the cast doesn't call for a ton of people, uh, because of the, the isolation of it. Was this something that you sort of did on purpose just, just, uh, for the feel of the movie or more so so you didn't have to have a bunch of people on set? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, basically, so with Escape from Cannibal Farm and with The House of Violent Desire, um, though I, I made those films, I, I showed people those films and they came out. And I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of having ensemble casts and loads of characters. I love, like, I love a lot of characters and a lot of sort of different plot strands. Mm -hmm. I'm really into that sort of thing. Um, but actually, when it comes to an independent straight-to-DVD horror movie that should really only be between 80 and 90 minutes mm -hmm. and not two hours, which is what uh, the original cut of Cannibal Farm was <laughs> and what House of Violent Desire is, uh, you know, really, you, you can't have all that stuff. That's more like, you know, miniseries or something. Sure. And so I basically decided that I should do something that just – stripped all of that away and it's just like a very simple story you know just that there's these two characters this one location you know they got this creature on the outside i mean the story does have more complex elements but like on the surface at least it's just a it's just a straight down the line simple story you know and i thought as a director it's hard enough trying to 
uh, bring together the plot elements of nine different characters and make sure that all the performances are good. Um, so I thought, look, let's just get two people together and we'll make it, w let's try and make it perfect, you know, sure. um, and just focus on that. So that was, uh, that was basically uh, why I chose to do it that way. I mean, I think there's 10 characters in the film in total. Mm -hmm. Um so, so yeah, I mean, there are other people who come into it, but yeah, of course, the majority is just these two characters. And um, on set, that was actually, in a way, it was quite a challenge because usually, you know, actors are coming and going and you're dealing with all different people, but just for two people to be stuck in the same place mm. for 25 days, that's actually a really long time yeah. uh, to just be doing these two people talking. And then uh, from a writing perspective, that's a very severe limitation that I'd put on myself to just have two people and to just be in the one location. I mean, I, I tried as best I could to cram as much action into this basically one room mm -hmm. as possible, which I think I did. I mean, there's not much more that could have happened in yeah. this cabin, you know. Uh, and, um, but yeah, you know, uh, yeah. No, that's, that, that's, that's true. And, uh, I, you know, we talked about how you've used a lot of the same actors. Do you also use a lot of the same crew as well for, for all your, all these shoots you've done? Yeah. So basically, I mean, the other, the other half of my basically filmmaking team is my cinematographer, Michael Lloyd. Um, I mean, basically everything we're doing is in a nutshell is him and me going out and, uh, you know, he, he manages the lighting, uh, and I mean, together we manage basically the set as well. Sure. Um, and he does the camera operating and his style of cinematography, you know, is essential to my style of, well, the, the whole style of my films basically. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure he's, I don't think he's, uh, being a director of photography on any other feature film other than mine. <laughs> so his, his, I mean, his star is basically my style, you know? So yeah. we, we met at film school and I think he wasn't keen on being a director of photography. He wanted to do the camera operating, not the lighting. Mm. And I just said to him, come and do a short film for me. You know, you, you can do it. You know, I know yeah. I've seen what you can do. Let's do it. You know? Um, and so basically, uh, I used to, you know, way back when I was just doing short films, I used to just light them myself. And I've always had an idea of the style of how I like things to look. Uh, you know, I have a specific idea of how a film should look sure. for me. Sure. Um, and basically him and I, we basically kind of discovered that together as we were doing my short films. Um, and then, like I say, he's done every feature of mine. And, uh, well, in fact, the film I'm about to shoot, um, he, that will be the first time he's actually not the, my director of photography uh, because I'm shooting in a bit more of a, a documentary style and it's all natural daylight and it's all sort of a little bit more of a realism thing. Mm. Um, and I'm away in America to yeah. shoot. So, uh, and he's back in England, you know, he's not come with me. <laughs> so that'll be the first time I'm not using him. But uh, in fact, when I'm back in England uh, next month, uh, by the end of the month, we will have began another film, which wow. uh, I'm scheduled to shoot, which uh, he'll be back on director of photography duty. So, wow, yeah. wow. So these, so obviously, you you said you have one in post, you have one you're about to film here in America, then you have one scheduled after that. Are these, is this all still part of, uh, are, are they going to be, um, you know, released by that same distributor or sales agent company? Uh, no, in fact, they're not. So, um I did, uh, I did winter skin for that company. Mm -hmm. Uh, the barge people was, uh, private investors and I signed up with a totally different, uh, company, a very, uh, well-established horror distributor. Mm. Um, and then, uh, the film that I did, uh, I did a film called the English an, an English haunting, uh, back in December I shot it and it's basically just finishing up post-production. Um, and that's a old fashioned haunted house movie, a British haunted house movie. Yeah. Um, sort of a, it's set in the 1960s, a very classic ghost story feel, very okay. subtle. Um, 
and uh, that that one is with the same company as Winter Skin. Mm. Um, but then the film I'm shooting, the film I'm about to shoot, uh, is not with that company, and the film after that is with a French company. Oh. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I've I've started to kind of. Uh, get more offers from other people yeah, this, uh, wanting it, to work with me basically it feels like is this the kind of thing where uh it feels like you have you know you started and put out one or two things and then uh now you've re- you've realized there's a, a big need for independent horror and all these companies are uh you know fighting to get good independent <laughs> horror films to put out there <laughs> i mean maybe that's it yeah, yeah. i mean um <laughs> yeah basically that's that's awesome though that's that's really great well um, well, before we uh, talk about barge people, I just want to, do you know uh, when and where everyone can see Winter Skin? Yeah, so it comes out in America on the 21st of May. Um, I mean, in all the press articles and, and they've been, uh, the stuff they've been telling me, they're saying it comes out on VOD on okay. the 21st of May. But then on Amazon, it says the DVD is oh. coming out 21st of May as well. Okay. So uh, usually it's VOD and then the DVD comes three or four weeks later. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's out later this month. So yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Key, so you guys got to keep your eyes uh, on any VOD outlets uh, around the 21st of May, Winter Skin, and you guys can watch it there. And I just want to add, I mean... I'm really uh, not happy with the DVD cover that they've made for it. I probably shouldn't be saying that. But don't be put off by their ugly, ugly, ugly DVD cover that they've made. And just look at the nice poster I had made. It's on the IMDb page. You just got to imagine that that's the DVD cover. Yeah, I'm looking at the one on the IMDb right now. It looks great. What, they didn't like They didn't like your idea or what? Well, well, you see, that looks very retro and is in keeping with... Uh, the horror, the, the film that I've yes. made, you know, the, the sort of retro horror style. Mm-hmm. Um, but retro stuff does not sell big to the masses, you know, in terms of like straight to DVD movies, um, they don't want it to look retro. They want it to look as modern as possible mm. so that, you know, the teenage audiences, they're going to come and buy it. Yep. Uh, they'll be turned off. If it looks, if it looks like it came from the seventies with a hand drawn poster, they don't like that. Um, um but I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's not so good for sales. Basically. I think a lot of us, uh, you know, classic horror fans like that. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen, have you seen the DVD cover? I, I haven't. I, I'll have to, I'll have to Google it real quick. <laughs> Well, have a look. <laughs> uh, but no, I do like this one right here. I, of course, I do like the retro hand drawn look. So I, we've been fighting with that a little bit on a film that we just completed, and and uh, we have a couple of producers that are um, gonna help us with some distribution. And they're like, and and yeah, the ones they keep asking for are these like modern pictures of the characters with the blob. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, no, I just want this hand drawn poster. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, my issue with this DVD cover. <laughs> is first of all it's very modern and it has uh you know the, it, it has a different character with a modern day uh you know sort of shotgun type of thing and a police pistol and then there's you know a horde of white creatures that look like they came out of a video game or something like big white sharp tooth creatures uh, i'm looking at it right now <laughs> i mean so uh, basically it it, it, it missells the film you know yeah. oh yeah um i hope that i hope that it gets people to buy it of course but ideally you know you would have just had you know the skinless creatures sure. that are from my film yeah and the character in his i mean the film is set in the 70s the character with his 70s era rifle and yeah. fur coat and leather waistcoat you know that that would have been appropriate <laughs> yeah so, th- yeah this guy's got like a tactical modern shotgun in a in a, in a nine millimeter or something in his pocket <laughs> yeah and you see it so i i will get a load of backlash for this because people will watch the film expecting that and that's not what it is so you know yeah. it's, it's, it's a bad situation for me uh well i can see it though I, this might get some uh, teenagers to go ahead and, and rent the thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that, that's what matters that as long as they watch it yeah you know. <laughs> Uh, well, well, that's cool. That's cool. Well, um, if unless you had a, a couple more points you wanted to bring up, I, I thought we could talk about the barge people for a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on to the barge people. Okay, uh, great. Well, yeah, I uh, so I just watched this one as well, and uh, uh-huh. I I don't know, I I this 
you said that it's been getting the most acclaim and and it it might be my favorite of yours so far (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) uh not that i didn't like winter skin because i actually uh i actually like the setting the isolation uh just the whole atmosphere of winter skin uh better probably and that's sort of my ideal just personally as a horror fan uh if it's if it's isolated and there's snow like i'm gonna watch it i don't care what it is (laughs) yeah 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 but um but no, the barge people. I thought um, it just it had um, had some wonderful shots in it. The cinematography was awesome, oh. um, and I just felt like uh, the the soundtrack, the score was really locked in. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, it just it just was a good looking movie. I thought. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, the, so The Barge People is the first film I've done that I did not write myself. Um, and when I was making Escape from Cannibal Farm, uh, the lead actress, Kate Davis Speak, she said that uh, someone she knew, a writer, um, had this script called The Barge People, and she was explaining to me that it was kind of like this backwards horror movie where these characters are on the canal, and then they come up against these horrible barge people, and it's almost like a very British version of The Hills Have Eyes, Mm -hmm. where instead of like a desert, we're actually on the canal, which is very British. Um, And I'm kind of, you know, I've been looking for... Uh, I've been looking for things that are specifically British because, you know, because I am a British horror filmmaker, it's like I want to uh, share sort of the horrors of my own country or or like set the horror within these settings I'm familiar with because it's not done so often, you know. Uh, Like uh, Cannibal Farm, people said it was uh, kind of trying to be like a British version of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre sure. type thing. And for sure, I'm inspired by American movies, American horror a lot, you know. But actually, to be able to do purely British stuff um, that is like just completely unique to Britain, I thought was interesting. And so uh, this script, uh, I went and read it, and I basically just thought to myself, you know, if somebody else ended up making this film, I would be really jealous that somebody else got to make this script, you know, because I, it's just so up my street. Um, and so that's basically how, how it came to be. And, uh, it's a very, uh, in a way it's quite a simple horror story, you know, like, uh, like I said, cannibal farm, house of violent desire there, bordering on two hours long they're very complicated with sort of plot and character and stuff Mm -hmm. uh the barge people does have uh all the character development but it's it's not going to overload you with it and basically they're on this canal holiday by the time these barge monsters show up it's just carnage from that moment right to the end Mm -hmm. which is kind of like you know uh it's a very easily watchable horror film. You know, you can just sit down uh, with, with uh, you know, some popcorn and you, you're just probably going to enjoy the sort of carnage of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I I definitely agree. Um, the setting works out great and, and just the the feel. And also, um, I thought the characters did a great job too, the actors and actresses. Um, yeah. You know, once again, Kate, Kate Davies speak is there once again. Um, and like I already mentioned, David Lennick uh, has uh, – it's more than a cameo. I don't want to call it a cameo because <laughs> yeah, yeah. he is there for a few <laughs> scenes. Uh, yeah. But, but no, it's, it's – uh, I, I love the feel of it. And did you have – was it the same uh, like effects people or effects person that you use or makeup artist? No. So actually the barge people, I did – all of the the actual gore and the blood, I did all of it myself. Oh, that's right, because um, it was before Winter Skin. That's right. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. And so, um, but I'm, but in this one, I'm actually quite proud of that because yeah, it looks good. Um, like all, all the blood as well is my handmade blood. It's like my own recipe of blood. Wow. So uh, everything, um, everything I, I basically did. Yeah. Did um, now the barge people themselves? Did you did you do that too, or was that? No, so the, so the barge people themselves are like uh, custom-made silicon masks, which okay. was handled uh, entirely by a, a completely different company, mm-hmm. um, and so that was just uh, that was a that was a whole other thing. Um, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, this one uh, obviously, I mean, was it hard? You're you're on a bar or a barge. You're on a on a canal here. Was there just one section of the canal that you mainly used for shooting, or were you really up and down like a little ways on on a canal shooting this film? 
Uh, well, the canal was, it was really difficult to just uh, navigate getting around on this canal because the problem with the canal is that um, you're sailing along and there's only specific points where you can turn your boat around. Mm. And that might be two hours up the canal wow. until you get to the point where you can turn. So, for example, there were, there were scenes, because there are two boats in the film, one that where like, most of the action is set on the main boat, mm -hmm. but then there's also the boat of these uh, local canal characters. Um, that there's their boat as well. And one day we needed to get back to their boat to actually film their scenes before the sun went down. You know, so we, we had these three actors, they'd come all the way out to do these scenes. Yeah. Um, from like London. I mean, they'd come, they'd come hours, you know, and we were sailing down the canal and it was like two hours to a turning point <laughs> and two hours back. And there was actually a moment where, I, I in the in the canal where you couldn't turn I just turned the boat um, <laughs> and I just like revved the engine as as hard as I could and you know we we just rammed it up onto the bank and reversed it and then rammed it up and eventually I managed to get the whole thing turned <laughs> just with like you know the force of it because wow. we needed to get back you know the sun was going down yeah but then when we got to the when we actually got there and got it all set up I had all of these uh, shots that I'd planned of how this, how uh, we were going to film the barge crashing into the other barge. Because mm. I mean, they they crash into it. They kind of you know bump into it, yeah, yeah. and that causes um, you know it's a main plot point because it causes an argument between these rival characters. Yes, and I thought you know I've got a great idea where we can put the boats together and then we'll push them apart by hand and then I can reverse the shot mm. and it'll look like they bump into each other. I mean, we had no time for that. When you know, the sun was going down, we didn't have the time. So I was just like, crash the boat. Do <laughs> so we just crashed the boat on for real, which in fact, on the, on the camera, I was actually a little disappointed when I watched the shot back because if you were stood on, on the, um, you know, on ground and mm. looking at these two boats, that boat that boat really thumped hard into the other boat Did and it? all of this stuff <laughs> fell off the top you know all of these uh, logs for the fire and stuff all came toppling off the top <laughs> of the other boat we really bashed into it but the camera was uh, down sort of at the water level just to see the actual impact so mm -hmm. in, in a way you don't really see how hard we actually crashed these boats wow uh, and uh, <laughs> This was basically a recurring theme through the shoot is that we, this was such an ambitious film uh, to do in a very little amount of time. And we basically just had to, a lot of it, we just had to wing it and we just had to say, we don't have time to do sure. the shots that we planned. You're just going to have to go for it, you know? Mm. Uh, and so when you, when you watch sort of like the fight scenes in, in the carnage and in fact, as well, the emotional dialogue scenes towards the end where characters are crying and snotty and, you know, uh, yeah. having, having their real emotional outbursts, we just didn't have the time to really plan it through. And so it was just me saying, you know, go, 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 you have to do this. So with the fight, and this is where the actors really were amazing because with the fight sequences, you know, I would think, damn, you know, this is going to take an hour to plot out how this person is going to get thrown across the table <laughs> yeah. into this and then blood splurts out there. That's going to take a long time. So instead, I would kind of just say, I would explain it to the actors and then I'd say, so let's just do it. You know, let's just <laughs> see what happens and they would throw themselves around and crash into each other and my cameraman uh, got knocked over a couple of times i've got an outtake where he slips over in a bathtub full of blood and, uh, with the camera and totally goes down and so i was just sort of you know that was the way it had to be and mm. i honestly when i thought i was making it and I, I was doing these scenes, I thought, this is going to be shit, you know, this is going to be a real mess. When I come to edit this film, all of these sequences that I'd planned out carefully, they were ruined, mm. you know, they, mm. they were a disaster. And then when I actually got the footage and watched and started editing it together, I'm like, there's, there's an energy to this that's really real. Um, and actually, I think that's what makes the film 
good is the fact that there was just this energy to it. And these people, I mean, they kind of are getting hurt as they're getting smashed through walls and, you know, fighting each other and swinging things at each other. They kind of are getting hurt. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, no, it looks like it. <laughs> and, and so that gives it, that gives the action this really sort of savage energy. No. Um, yeah, I thought it looked great. Is, I, I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell that you didn't, you know, work hours on, on each of those. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, literally, like, you know, when the, when the girl gets thrown through the wall, obviously we'd built in this fake wall because mm-hmm. we knew that we wanted that to, we knew we wanted that. Um, this moment where she gets smashed from the bathroom into the bedroom and breaks through a wall in the boat. In mm-hmm. order to, but again, uh, I'd sort of planned a way we were going to do this, and I, I, I think we were even going to, dress somebody else up in her costume and just not have her do it. Yeah. McKenna Guyler, the actress who did that part, she was just like, no, I want to do it. You know, <laughs> I want to get thrown through the wall. And honestly, we just threw her through the wall and it was really that simple. We didn't have the time to, <laughs> to really go to town on it. Yeah. And she like, she was like, fine. You know, so the guys would just grab her and just, throw her through this wall and smash the wall broke apart and she went through it and you know (laughs) that's basically how how this film went you know that's that's amazing (laughs) the same thing actually with the dialogue scenes um we were we were really troubled by bad weather uh through the the whole of the second half of the film where we were doing a lot of the exteriors in the woods and in fact in the original script everything at the end apart from the pub is set in the woods Mm. um so uh in the film there's sequences in sort of like a barn where the guy's in the cage and then there's sequences where um the main two characters are in another barn and they're sort of having a heart to heart that was all supposed to be the woods but we had to go and shoot in these locations because we were basically hit by this huge storm and every day it was raining and there was wind and it was just really terrible conditions and it got to this day this final day and i just looked through the script and there was so much emotional stuff uh key emotional scenes where characters needed to scream and shout and cry and I mean, we had like three or four main scenes and I was like, you know, because the weather had put us off on those other days, we hadn't got around to it until now. And this was our last day. Mm. And so it's 11 o'clock at night and it's still raining. And then at midnight, the rain goes off. So (laughs) it's like, right, let's go out there. We have, I don't know, three or four hours to just shoot all of these scenes that really should have taken about three days. Yeah. (laughs) And so I get them out there um, and they don't have time to warm up into it. It's just, you have to hit it right now. You have to cry. You have to have snot. You have to (sighs) scream and shout. And at the same time, this storm is going on around us, you know? So you you can see in this scene where Kat and Jade are shouting to each other, their hair's blowing in their face and they're crying and screaming. Yeah. You, I mean, you really had to scream (laughs) to be heard over the wind. And then this action sequence in the barn, um, where it looks like a, basically a hurricane is happening, you know, and there's like this machete and meat cleaver on a chain fight. Yep. Uh, honestly, it kind of, we were hit by this storm. So this crazy storm with all this wind, uh, was just kind of ferocious and we were just, but we had to do the scene and it was really miserable to shoot. And in fact, my, camera operator he just like zipped himself inside of his coat zipped all the way to the top so you could just see his eyes and he didn't speak to a single person (laughs) i mean because it was so cold and just being bombarded with wind um and me as a director i just sort of same i kind of zipped up my coat and i had the monitor in front of me and i just thought right i can see on my screen here what we're filming and shot by shot all I need to do is just say what the next shot is, what the <laughs> shot is. And if I can just do that, I can get through this whole thing. Yeah. Um, wow. And so that's basically how we did it. But again, uh, when I got to the edit, I mean, I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, this is like 
a hurricane happening. Like you would have needed all these wind machines to make it look as crazy as it looks. So all of this kind of worked in our favor, but in terms of the shoot itself, it was miserable at times. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, what? Well, yeah, what? Well, That—that's a crazy story. I mean, it did. It ended up looking great on camera, and I even uh, a couple of those parts where they were screaming at each other, mainly right before uh, she goes into the barn to to save her boyfriend. Um, I'm like, yeah. wow, like they're doing a really good job here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, all of those scenes they were literally shot within like three hours. <laughs> I was just like, we don't have time cry go wow. you know that's how it was and that got good results you know yeah no no it certainly did uh wow so this um i got to say i uh you, obviously you had the same cinematographer uh, yeah. as you did all the other ones but i for some reason i just felt like there was uh stylistically just it was a little bit a little different i don't know if that was something that you or he were aiming for or yeah yeah Th there was a big difference because we were basically usually we like to film on set you know mm -hmm. like uh with the winter skin we'd built that cabin from scratch we'd built in specifically where we knew the sources of light were going to be coming from um and we're on a set so we can rig lights above the actors we can make it look as cinematic as possible mm -hmm. and that's how i like to work um but this was like i mean when you're on a barge uh sailing down the canal mm -hmm there is nowhere to rig lights um so this has a much more naturalistic look um a much more sort of rough and grimy and gritty look and um and yeah i mean it's just uh, most of the film from the moment the barge people actually show up we decided to just do everything handheld so th this one is really um it, it, i wanted it to look like a sort of uh shoddy exploitation b movie from you know the 70s or 80s mm -hmm. and that was the look we were going for with it so i mean i i think on in some ways uh you know it's kind of the the worst looking of my movies yeah. because we kind of just we did away with all of these things and we just went and embraced just the the natural elements you, you know um but then at the same time that was a very interesting look as well yeah. um and then with the score, you know, you said about the music, uh, I, again, I really wanted to embrace the total trashiness of it. Mm -hmm. And so, like, my inspirations for the music uh, were, were uh, films like the soundtrack of Scalps and The Boogeyman. Yeah. And if you've listened to these old retro soundtracks, I mean, the music is kind of horrible. <laughs> you know, like, they're using these really ugly, basic-sounding synthesizers and um i wasn't sure my composer would actually go for that because i was kind of telling them i want it to be as ugly and cheap sounding as possible <laughs> i mean back in the 70s these instruments were used in, in this particular type of way because they didn't have the budget for a decent score you know so yeah. they would get someone on their little keyboard at home <laughs> to make basically the shittest score yeah you know just a, a very cheap sounding <laughs> horrible sound in score but that's what i wanted for the film because i wanted those vibes you know i think it so turned then, i liked it i mean i think it, i think it matched right along with the feel of the film and it all just came together yeah, you know in yeah. one nice package there <laughs> yeah I, I really love the soundtrack of, of both this and winter skin you know yeah. i really loved both soundtracks do you use the i i didn't uh look just now do you use the same composer as well on most all of your your films um, so on Cannibal Farm and House of Violent Desire and The Barge People, I'm using the same composer, Sam Benjafield. And then on Winter Skin, uh, I used a totally different composer. It's actually uh, a pair of composers um, who basically they specialize in uh, i mean i'd listen to their music they have they already have albums out and i was a fan of theirs um and they do very uh very john carpenter sound in synth music and i mean uh, an inspiration musically for winter skin was the thing soundtrack sure um so and i basically said to them right you can do one of these soundtracks either the barge people or winter skin and they chose winter skin because they wanted to tackle that sort of snowy the thing style yeah. score but 
the opening title music of the barge people which is kind of quite uh that piece will stand out to you yeah. when you watch the film or when people watch the film they did that themselves so they so the composers of winter skin did the main title music of the barge, barge people. people okay yeah no i i noticed it right off the bat i was like oh this is a retro definitely retro horror feeling soundtrack right here exactly and then <laughs> i was then able that's what we did first and then i gave that main title theme to the composer of the barge people and then i said right this is what the guys have done as a main title theme you now need to keep it in this style of retro sound mm. and do the rest of the score and and funnily enough on winter skin it has a very sort of like minimalist electronic soundtrack all the way through the film yeah. until at the end when there's this gigantic shootout the music suddenly becomes kind of a bit more epic yeah um and i wasn't happy with the drafts of the music that the winter skin composers were doing so my barge people composer i got him to do that one piece oh. so they both kind of helped each other to get sort of the best out of the music in both films wow uh, that's that's interesting wow <laughs> Uh, well, cool. Well, so this, um, obviously, we don't have as much information on barge people. They can be divulged quite yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're saying we should look for it, pro pro well, hopefully towards the end of the year, right? I think so, yeah. I mean, you kind of never know, but um, yeah, I mean, yeah. We'll, we'll see. I know it's going to be playing some big festivals uh, later in the year, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, well, like with the festivals, is that something that, that uh, you as the filmmaker wanted to do or, or is that part of uh, what the company wants to do as well is bring them to festivals beforehand? Uh, kind of both, actually. So, you know, with with Winter Skin, um, I was very keen to get it into a bunch of festivals. Um, but actually, I... I I was told that, you know, I could only enter these particular ones, mm. which was kind of annoying, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, it really hasn't played much. And that was at the request of the distributor. They didn't want me to submit to, you know, all these smaller festivals. Yeah. Um, whereas with the Barge people, it's the opposite. You know, my distributor, they want as many festivals as possible and preferably the big genre festivals. Sure. Um, and so, uh, you know, with my film that I shot in December, An English Haunting, um, you know, I put in the contract then that I wanted to enter as many festivals as possible with yeah. that. So, you know, going ahead, that's something because that's something I've actually really not done much of. And, and I need to I'm always so busy actually making the movies that I do need to spend a little bit more time actually going around and showing them to people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely a good experience from what I hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, to, to be able to sit there and watch it like with the crowd and see what the reactions are and, and can be definitely. Yeah. Hard. I mean, so when I, every time I finish a film, I book out a few screenings, um, around like London and then my hometown so that, uh, my friends and friends of the actors and a lot of industry friends, you know, a lot mm. of uh, other horror filmmakers, um, they can all see it. And I mean, that's extremely valuable to actually just get a sense of everybody's reaction. You, you, you can see right away, you know, where you've gone wrong, what needs to be changed. Mm. Like I said, you know, I cut about 15 minutes of material out of Cannibal Farm. Sure. Because when I'd shown it to everyone, that's how I felt, you know, and I needed to make cuts. Um, so yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I mean, obviously you're you're busy. You're working on a few more projects now. Are they still uh, in the same vein as as these films? Like, are they very? Uh, I, I almost want to say, especially with Winter Skin and Barge People, very uh, you know retro feeling, uh, throwback. Uh, they're definitely for fans of the classic horror movies. Yeah, so the film I'm about to shoot is a very grindhousey, exploitation style horror film. You know, I'm here in uh, Nashville, Tennessee to like film the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be like very rural, set on a farm. So if you're fans of stuff like, you know, uh, The Devil's Rejects and The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and that kind of I mean, it's, it's a total splatter movie. It'll be my most violent film for sure. Wow. Um, and has has like a bit of a black exploitation element in there as well. <laughs> nice. Um, so that one should be interesting. And yeah, extremely retro, that film. Um, and then 
pretty immediately after that one I'm shooting a vampire movie um, which is like it's going to be very modern uh, which is quite a different style to my usual stuff uh, because it needs to be given this uh, very slick modern thriller look Um, but you know it, it will still have it will still have a very retro element because you know th- that's just what i really enjoy as a filmmaker that that style sure. i I'm, I'm turned off by films that look just really modern i prefer things to kind of look timeless and my favorite era of horror is 70s horror films so mm-hmm. I take all my inspiration from the cinematography from those movies <clears throat> well i think you can you can tell just at the beginning of any of your films, right with the uh, with the dark, with the Dark Temple uh, yeah, title yeah. title card because it's totally retro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, that's awesome. Well, I can't wait to to check out what you have coming up. And uh, gosh, I mean, it's just uh, rocking and rolling for you. So hopefully the projects okay. keep coming and then we can keep talking about them here as they come out. And yeah, uh, yeah. What what an awesome journey. Well. Um, Cool. Did you have anything else you wanted to plug or say or where people should, uh, you know, follow you or pay attention? Um, no, I just think, uh, yeah, go, go and get Winter Skin when it comes out and hopefully you enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, that's awesome. it, basically. Great, great. Well, uh, well, cool. Well, thanks for joining us again, Charlie. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, you guys listening, thanks for listening. Make sure to check out Winter Skin at the end of this month. Uh, we'll catch you guys on the next episode. We'll see you. Don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. Oh, yes. There will be blood.